Welcome back to the show. Uh, and of course, big focus on mental health and wellness throughout the show today. Um, and looking forward to having a chat with our next guest. Uh, no stranger uh, to just about any achievement here in the UAE, whether it be adventurer, explorer, motivational speaker. And now I read retreat facilitator as well. Julie Lewis, great to have you with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's. Um yeah, evolution of the species. Yeah. <laughs> the species. Um, I, I, I've been in, in, in Dubai for over 20 years and, and I wouldn't put Dubai and retreat hand in hand. I wouldn't have done it five years ago. Mm -hmm. So why, why have we seen this sort of evolution, as you've been there, of yeah. Dubai or the UAE, I should say, becoming a genuine place for people to take retreats? I think there's just been that general um, consciousness that we need to think, eat, move, sleep meditate, hydrate differently. We need to go and find blue and green places and spaces to do that, to step out of our normal environment and not just book a flight and go on a trip. It's really looking at different themes of different retreats, uh, different locations, and even you know the duration. Is it a 24 hour retreat? I often take 24 hour me retreats. I just check in somewhere for 24 hours and say, I'm out of off the radar, just to kind of recalibrate or is it a we retreat, there's couples retreats, or is it a retreat in the concept of you're going to a desert location, a mountain location, a five-star hotel with great spa facilities, or jumping on a boat and sailing away to um, one of the islands mm -hmm. and just really spending that time. I think nature is a big thing and, and not necessarily everybody thinks of Dubai nature, but we're surrounded by nature, we're surrounded by water. And all of the neuroscience shows that being in, on, around and underwater is, you know, it. It makes you happier, healthier, you live longer. It's it's blue and green spaces, mm. so find them. <laughs> find them, and, and Julia, I'm sold on all the above. Everything that you've said, I am. I fit into that box completely. But like you said, and like Tom mentioned a bit earlier, people don't think Dubai retreat go together. Mm. There are some incredible destinations though mm. across the UAE. Could you share with us what you would highlight and suggest for people? Yeah, I think, you know, if you choose to go to the mountains, to the desert location, I think it's basically getting out of your normal environment. That's home, air conditioned, fluorescent lighting and a screen. Mm. Um, you know, uh, environmental psychologists call it attention restoration. So instead of looking at a screen um, <laughs> and overthinking, you're out in the big outdoors, you know, so it's attention restoration. So nature really is a natural immune booster, a natural stress buster. So it's whether it's out on the water, in the desert, in the mangroves, in, um, in the miracle garden, you know, yeah. anywhere really where it's just a change and you're, you're more neurologically alive. What you're seeing, hearing, smelling, feeling, tasting is completely different from when you're on autopilot at home to the office, home to the mall, home to a friend's house. So it's just kind of flicking the switch to being more self-aware and, oh, look at that, look at that flower, look at, look at the water, look at the patterns. Mm. Um, so I think it's just becoming more aware of what's around us. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big, big thing, you know, to be self-aware, to be able to self-regulate. I need a hug. I need to go and swim in the ocean. I need to go and hug a tree. Mm -hmm. I need to climb up that dune in the desert. I need to do some yoga. I need to have a Tibetan bowl <laughs> over me. You know, so there's different modalities. And I think it's just finding the one that, what do I need right now? Mm. Uh, and when you can ask yourself, what do I need right now? and then gift yourself that. Maybe it's just 24 hours not speaking to anybody. Yeah. With regards to like younger people taking retreats, and I think one thing I've realized is we are, we like to take agency upon, you know, taking control and being happy. We're, we're less materialistic than, you know, other generations. I've seen a lot of my friends really prioritize going out on retreats. What are certain retreats you find more suitable or more popular that younger people actually go on versus um, people that are, you know, not like from Tom. our generation. Yeah. Just say it. Like say it. Say it. Oh, yeah. I, I don't mean oh. to say this. I don't mean. Don't worry. I, like, I, I said you can go from. Yeah, I'm you trying can to be politically from, correct. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you can go from the ultra looks, you know, where everything, every detail is taken <laughs> care of, to the ecotourism, to nature-based tourism, yeah. to Ayurvedic. You can go from one extreme to the other, to camping in the desert, to yeah. stargazing. Um, so I think it's really asking yourself, what do I need? Or you might see a picture and you mm. think, 
I need to go there. Or yeah. you, you might hear something, music, and think, I need to be in that vibrational frequency. Yeah. So I think it's choosing what you need right now. Is it a guest lodge? Is it a five-star hotel? Is it, is it a, a boat, a dhow that you just sail off on yeah. and, and kind of get Perhaps back to budget nature? Budget-friendly. Budget-friendly, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think for me, you know, nature is free. You know, sunshine gives us energy. The water is good yeah. for cleansing. You know, <laughs> green is growth. I mean, all of the things you don't have to get a prescription. You don't have to pay a fortune for. Yeah. And I think the other big thing about retreats is social connection, mm -hmm. meeting different people that you wouldn't maybe normally meet through your work or your family or your friends. So then you're exchanging ideas mm -hmm. and you know this feeling of being disconnected or lonely or not fitting in, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden you find your tribe because they also want to kind of improve their life, mm -hmm. how they're thinking, eating, I've just moving. Got finding yes. your tribe. Okay, so finding I'm your be drive. Honest here. Yeah. When you go on vacation with me, it's very exciting. But even for myself, I need a vacation after the vacation. I'm yes. super hyper. I'm up at 8 a.m. I, I, I don't stop running around. It's very exciting, but not relaxing. What would you recommend for someone like me? Um, silent like retreat. A, silent retreat. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Everyone there would quit their job if they were done with me. A silent retreat. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's you know people go on digital detoxes, you know, where you just say it. It's actually. Um, away from distractions, basically, away from that must, must do, and, and very zen. So you have, you know, kind of nature walks, and then you have a meditation, and you have journaling and things, so that you're actually going more inwards as opposed to, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this, and I have to be there by three. So I think retreats, really, the ideal ones, tick all the box in terms of what you specifically need mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So if you've come from a vacation where it's been full on, then you need to be able to turn down the dial a little bit and not necessarily have an agenda, have some framework and know that, you know, there's these activities, but I can actually just chill. No schedule. You activities. can do a, a do nothing <laughs> retreat. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know what that looks like. I have no. everyone's life scheduled <laughs> I know. every hour of the day. I yeah. think Dean is going to struggle, but you got to start somewhere, Dina, yeah. for sure. Um, Julie, I want to thank you so much for thank your you. time and for your insights uh, on World Mental Health Day. And hopefully yeah. we'll see you very, very soon. Our spotlight today, though, is a one-stop shop for wellness treatment. So watch this. <laughs>Hi, I'm Nasima Minari, the founder of Holistified. Holistified is the UAE's first dedicated booking platform and marketplace for wellness. So we're here to help you find your wellness in the UAE. Well, I started Holistified to actually solve a problem. I saw as a wellness professional myself that there is an ocean of offerings out there in the UAE when it comes to wellness. So we're here to help wellness professionals to reaffirm their credibility in the market and two, to help wellness seekers and enthusiasts to find their wellness. Since our launch in 2022, we've onboarded close to 100 professional partners. So what we're actually helping our partners with is to affirm their credibility. Today in the UAE, there are thousands of wellness professionals. And what we're doing is actually verifying that everybody on board is legally licensed. So this is why we're here. This is our purpose to help people find their wellness and to make sure that they work with individuals and enterprises that are properly licensed. Our long-term goals are to expand into other markets. So for today, we're here in Dubai and it's such an exciting market to work in. We've expanded already to Abu Dhabi and we're soon to launch in other GCC markets as well. So the long-term goal is to become the number one destination to find your wellness. It'd be hard for me to choose what my favorite thing about living in Dubai is, but my top one, of course, is the safety aspect, followed by, of course, the numerous things that we can do as a family, and of course, running a business in Dubai is an absolute dream. I'm a huge fan of nature, so I would definitely spend my daytime on the beach and then my evening by the desert.
to get on that app, a marketplace for all things wellness. Well, it's time for one of my favorite parts of the show, the Daily Roundup. And Nimi, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Adina. And on Well Mental Health Day, of course, it is inclusive to all. And it's said that men suffer from postpartum depression and eating disorders too. Uh, psychologists in the UAE have actually said that men are susceptible to mental illness just, just as much as women are, but they just don't tend to ask for help. Uh, this is pretty common, uh, not just culturally, but no matter where you are in the world, for, for men to be a bit shy to open up with their emotions. Would, would you agree, Tom? I'm, I'm going to go back to a point that Ali made a little bit earlier on about um, the fact that there is this sort of, there's a tribal thing for blokes. You know, there's this mm. ma ma machismo, tribal, the team thing you were mm. talking about, that change room thing. And, and, and people don't like to show weakness. Mm. They, and, and you don't, you know, and you think you know best um, uh, at, at all times. And especially uh, when a baby comes into life and things do change in a household, you know. Um, your wife, who you have married, Mm -hmm. and had a child with, you lose them pretty much for six months because of the focus. I, I see you side-eyeing me. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm side-eyeing you anyway. You're no, not looking straight down the barrel here. I agree here. with you. Um, and and, and it, th that, there is a big change, and it's how men sort of approach that at the moment. But yeah, we're not good at calling out for help, are we? I mean, we're not. We're not. And, and the fact is, is that not everybody um, who you know identifies as a man has a safe space where they can automatically share their emotions and feelings with. I think one thing I realized from playing a lot of team sports is that the coach or the manager that allows for almost this locker room to be the sacred space where yeah. anything that is shared cannot be um, you know leaked out is the manager or the team that inevitably wins championships and if you kind of take that analogy and if the championship is life mm -hmm. you have to understand that part of going through the hard times is, is is knowing how to kind of let go and knowing where to let go with and it's it, it's completely ordinary for men to go through hard hardships but i think that we're not really um wired from a young age to understand the importance of building support systems this mm -hmm. is why when i lived in canada i understood the power of peer support networks. This is a very simple concept, but you know, adopted over your adolescent years and your maturity, the age where you mature, it changes your life. I mean, listen, in a single day, I will talk to my mom, a few of my friends, and I will talk to my colleagues about my emotions that day, how I'm feeling. I sat down and within a minute, I talked about everything that was de-stressing me that day. In the 20 years, 15 years that I've known Tom, I've never heard him say anything like really <laughs> like, <laughs> I love putting you on the spot today. No, you know what? I just, I need to understand even my husband with his own friends. It's like when they speak to each other, they're gaming. It is an opportunity for them to have um, intimate connections with each other, to, to, to talk about their emotions. I know a lot of them are struggling with different things. Why can't they just let it out? It is a safe space. Yeah. Even then, what is that hesitation? I'm looking at you, it. Ali. You're supposed to be giving me I mean, the answers. Look, yeah. look, the thing is, I, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Part of being a, a man is to be like competitive. Like you want to prove yourself. You, you, there's a lot of pressures to being a man, especially in this part of the world. Especially, uh, you know, I identify as Arab, and, and I feel like there is a pressure. It's, I just don't know how to say the fact that, you know, not everybody feels comfortable and. Mm we kind of have to find people who have the same mentality as us, who we won't feel judged by. So actually, it's very hard to find because you have to take initiative and start sharing and trusting. How can you trust? You kind of have to allow it. To and I think you're so right. And there's, there's these traditional roles that have been well established. And of course, the fact that we're having this conversation, the fact that these conversations are going on in the world over at the moment yeah. means that things are changing, they're evolving, as Julie was mentioning a bit earlier on. But the old idea of, you know, father, dad, bloke, provider is still mm -hmm. something that exists yeah. to this day, you know, mm -hmm. and it's something we see. Is and this toxic? Do you still find it? Do you think it's toxic? Do the, I think the it's... toxic masculinity? What's your opinion on that? <laughs> I'm going to that one. Yeah. <laughs> that might take all day. But I think we're going, we're shifting, aren't we? We're yeah. going and in the right direction. media is playing a huge part. Like, those conversations are very important. I'm sure someone, uh, a father watching this program with a son, will look at each other and smile. Yeah. Like, this is going to start a conversation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's what it's all about. Listen, uh, we've got plenty more to get into here. Uh, in fact, let's have a little look at what's coming up in a few minutes' time.
Uh, we are going to try a brand new wellness treatment called Access Bars Therapy. I'm intrigued. I'm sure you are as well. <laughs> Plus, Amy's checking out a wellness centre that promises head-to-toe pampering. All coming up very soon. We'll be right back.